We all know that feeling. Coming home after a long day, kicking off your shoes, grabbing the remote, and sinking into your favorite recliner. And then, with a simple pull of that trusty lever, the seat leans back, the footrest pops up, and suddenly, you've reached peak relaxation. But have you ever stopped to wonder how that little lever manages to transform your entire seat? It seems so simple on the outside, but inside your recliner is a surprisingly clever system of linkages, springs, and joints, all working in perfect sync. That pull isn't just adjusting one part of the chair, it's changing the whole structure to support your body in a new way. So today, let's lift the cushion and explore the mechanics behind this cozy piece of furniture, right here on History of Simple Things. The recliner isn't just a chair, it's a cultural icon. From movie marathons to midday naps, the recliner has become the go-to spot for comfort in millions of homes. But this beloved chair didn't always exist in its current form. In fact, it evolved over time from basic wooden loungers to complex mechanical seating with full body support. What makes a recliner different from a regular chair is its ability to shift into multiple positions with minimal effort, and the secret to that transformation lies in a small but mighty component, the lever. With one pull, the lever sets off a chain reaction, unlocking joints, shifting angles, and lifting panels. It's a piece of everyday engineering that we barely notice, even though we use it all the time. So what exactly happens when you pull that lever? Most recliners use a mechanical system based on what's called a three-way mechanism. This system connects the backrest, seat, and footrest through a series of metal arms and pivot points. When you pull the lever, you're engaging a release mechanism, usually a spring-loaded latch, that unlocks the footrest. At that moment, the chair shifts from a closed position to a partially reclined one. As you lean back, your body weight works with the mechanism to tilt the backrest and raise the footrest even further. It's a smooth and surprisingly precise motion, and it all starts with your hand tugging a simple handle. Inside every recliner is a hidden system of metal parts that work together like a well-rehearsed team. When you pull the lever, it triggers a release mechanism, usually a latch or catch, that starts a chain reaction. A torsion spring kicks in, helping to push the footrest outward. As the footrest lifts, a series of linkage arms extend and support it, ensuring it stays balanced and sturdy. Meanwhile, your weight shifts slightly backward and the mechanism senses this movement. That shift allows the backrest to begin reclining smoothly, all while keeping the seat base stable. It's not just one part moving, it's a full-body transformation of the chair, orchestrated through connected pivots and hinges. The beauty of this system is that it all feels effortless to the user. You don't have to think about which part moves first or how to position your body, it all just works together naturally. And all of that coordination starts with a single motion, pulling the lever. Here's a fun twist, you're actually part of the mechanism. Your body weight plays a crucial role in how the recliner adjusts. When you lean back, gravity shifts your center of mass, and the mechanism responds by pivoting the seat and backrest. Without that shift, the chair wouldn't recline smoothly, or at all. This use of gravity makes recliners incredibly efficient. It reduces the need for electric motors or complex hydraulics, especially in manual models. It's just you, a few levers, and the natural laws of physics working together to help you relax. One of the unsung heroes of the recliner world is the humble linkage system. These are the arms and joints that move when the lever is pulled. They may not look fancy, but they're carefully designed for strength, flexibility, and precision. Most recliner linkages are made from high-strength steel, shaped to move along a fixed path 
without bending or breaking. They're arranged so that each motion, lifting the footrest, leaning back or returning to upright, feels effortless. And they have to hold up under years of use. Think about it. How many times have you flopped down into your recliner without a second thought? That's hundreds, maybe thousands of cycles of motion, all absorbed by a few well-placed metal bars. Not all recliners work the same way. While most manual recliners use the side lever and a spring-assisted mechanism, pushback recliners remove the lever altogether. Instead, you use your body to push into the backrest, which triggers the reclining action. Then there are power recliners, which use electric motors to control every movement. These models are ideal for people who have limited mobility or simply want more precise positioning. With the push of a button, you can fine-tune the angle of your back, your legs, and even your head. Despite the different approaches, they all share one principle, coordinated movement. Whether it's manual or motorized, the goal is the same, maximum comfort with minimal effort. Designing a recliner isn't just about mechanics, it's also about ergonomics. The way a chair reclines affects your posture, circulation, and muscle support. When you pull the lever and lean back, the recliner doesn't just flop backward. It follows a carefully calculated arc designed to distribute your weight evenly. The goal is to relieve pressure from your lower back, support your legs, and let your spine rest in a natural curve. Even the angle of the footrest matters. It needs to lift your legs high enough to reduce swelling and improve blood flow, but not so high that it strains your knees. All of this is hidden behind that one little lever, but it represents decades of engineering, testing, and feedback from real users. So, where did the lever recliner come from? Reclining chairs go back centuries. Napoleon Bonaparte supposedly used a kind of folding recliner in the 1800s. But the modern recliner, with its spring-loaded lever and adjustable seat, really took off in the 1920s and 30s. In 1928, two cousins named Edward Knabush and Edwin Shoemaker, founders of what would become Lazy Boy, patented a reclining wooden porch chair. It didn't have a lever yet, but it was the beginning of something big. Over time, that simple chair evolved. Designers added padding, metal frames, and eventually the side lever. By the 1950s, the lever recliner had become a living room staple, and it hasn't looked back since. What's amazing is how this tiny mechanism, the lever, can control so much. It gives you access to comfort, relief, and rest, all in one movement. It turns your chair into a nap zone, a reading nook, or a movie-watching throne. And it does it all without calling attention to itself. We often take it for granted, but the lever is the gateway to a better seating experience. It's a small detail with a big job, and it does it with style. So the next time you pull that lever on your recliner, remember, you're not just adjusting a chair. You're activating a finely tuned system of physics, mechanics, and design, all built to help you relax just a little better. It's another great example of how thoughtful engineering hides in plain sight. From springs to linkages, from latches to levers, it's all been designed to make you more comfortable, one pull at a time. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.